Satellites are not cheap business. They cost a lot of money to design, construct, launch, and monitor. Just how much money? If you have at least $290 million in your bank account, that money can go into making a satellite that can track and monitor hurricanes. And about $100 million more if you want a satellite that carries a missile warning device. Some of the factors that drive the cost of satellites are the equipment and materials used to build them. Transponders alone take hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to maintain, while bandwidth cost per megahertz is priced at a minimum of about $3,500 a month. Running a satellite at 36 megahertz bandwidth will cost over $1.5 million a year. There are also the other gadgets and equipment that have to be built into the satellite in order for it to perform its intended function. These can include computers, computer software, and cameras. Another factor that contributes to the expense associated with satellites is the cost of putting one into orbit. It is estimated that a single satellite launch can range in the cost from a low of about $50 million to a high of about $400 million. Launching a space shuttle mission can easily cost $500 million, although one mission is capable of carrying multiple satellites and send them into orbit. Also to be considered in the cost of satellites is its maintenance. After getting one into orbit, it has to be monitored from a ground facility, which will require manpower. Satellites are also not impervious to damage or downtimes. Furthermore, if things don't go too well during a launch, a multi-million endeavor can either end up in pieces or sustain damages that will cost more money to repair. Now, if you're wondering why you'd spend crazy money to send a satellite into space, the answer really is because you can. Because these are the glorious times we live in. Because it just puts you in the same league as NASA, SpaceX, ISRO, and the likes. Okay, maybe not, but because you can actually make money out of the same satellite. Wondering how? Let's get it sorted. But first, some background. 60 years ago, it took a superpower and multiple failures to launch the Earth's first artificial satellite, the USSR's Sputnik 1. At a little over 22.8 inches in diameter, Sputnik was the size of a beach ball and could do little more than go beep beep and send low frequency radio signals back to Earth. And it took a rocket nearly 30 meters, nearly six stories high, to send it into space. Sputnik stayed in space for barely three months before it burned down, but we've come a long way since then. There are more than 2,271 satellites orbiting the Earth and an increasing number of them are now privately owned ones. As with all technology, Satellites, too, have become a lot cheaper. You no longer have to be a superpower to launch and station satellites in orbit around the Earth, neither do you have to be a billionaire. All you need are a few hundred thousand dollars, and you can launch your own satellite into space. Because why wouldn't you? All right, now let's get down to business. First you need is a satellite. So you go to the satellite operators. People like Utelsat, SES, etc., they are the people who will take a big loan of hundreds of millions of dollars and order a satellite from a satellite manufacturer, such as Airbus Defense and Space, Thales, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, etc. The operators will also pay for the launch vehicle provided by Ariane Space, Krunichev, SpaceX, etc. Depending on how big the satellite is, they either have to buy the whole rocket or maybe they can split the cost with another operator. But the big telecom satellites usually take up a whole rocket. Or you could just do it all by yourself. To put it simply, if you have enough money, you can buy a satellite straight off the shelf. The standard for long have been the CubeSats, small cubes that weigh just one kilogram, which came up around 1999. Since then, more than 100 of them have been launched by NASA alone, but primarily for schools and colleges. The good part about a CubeSat is that the hardware and know-how for building one is open source. This means anyone can buy the parts and build one. A CubeSat packs enough power to perform complex communication and computational exercises in space. But if you're too bored to build one and, you know, have some money lying around, you can even buy one off the internet from websites like CubeSatShop.com. The sad part is, while it's a lot cheaper than traditional satellites, CubeSats can still cost as much as $50,000 and nearly $100,000 when you include the cost involved in launching it. While the CubeSat sounds promising, it won't be getting your satellite into space anytime soon, and even if it can, there's bound to be a long waiting period. So renting from a satellite operator might be the best option. Fast forward two to three years. The satellite the operator ordered has been manufactured, tested, and launched into space. Then they're up and running. The satellite and the launch cost hundreds of millions, and geosatellites usually only last 15 to 20 years before starting to malfunction or running out of fuel and requiring them to be retired. So the operators have got to sell the services and make their money back plus profit before this expensive asset fully depreciates. 
so they rent their services to small ISPs, or in this case, you. But what would you do with the satellite? The first proposal is a communication satellite. Beaming data is a huge growth area because the information revolution is still in full swing with no signs of abatement. Every year, more and larger communication satellites are demanded and launched into space. Parts of the globe are still underserved in cell phone and internet service. Point-to-point -point and secure communications are in increasing demand. Soon, we will all have the internet with high-definition streaming video in our wristwatches and maybe, for some of us, directly in our brains. In my opinion, the manufacture and support of communication systems is one of the most lucrative opportunities for commercial space companies throughout the next century and beyond. So let's assume that you are a small internet service provider who rented a telecom satellite. This satellite is the one which can provide two-way data services, i.e. internet for let's say Bob in Mount Everest, who has a special dish on his house. How do they do this? Well, with the help of gateways. Desired data is routed from the web to the hub, but it must then be somehow sent to the satellite for subsequent retransmission to Bob in Mount Everest, who is waiting to receive his data has been modulated onto a physical signal and the big dish on the gateway transmits that towards the satellite. The satellite receives the signal, sends it to some electronics that changes the frequency, then amplifies the signal and retransmits it. This chain of electronics on the spacecraft, this ability to receive a signal and retransmit, is called a transponder, and this is where the operators make their money. You see, there is a relationship between how much data in a given time period is required to be sent, i.e. Mbps, and how much spectrum is required to achieve this. Transponders on the spacecraft are defined by chunks of spectrum. What happens is, small ISPs like you, usually dedicated to provide internet to rural areas, will lease a certain number of transponders, or a portion of a transponder, and when they do that, the operator will also ensure they sort out access for the ISP at their gateway. Operators can also provide to the ISP the dishes that the ISP's customer will need, acting as a wholesaler effectively. And that's how it works. You sell Bob in Mount Everest a small dish and modem. Bob pays you a lot of money for a capped and gets pretty constant coverage. What you did is that you leased capacity off a satellite which is owned by a satellite operator. The transponders have coverage over Mount Everest. You pay thousands of dollars a month usually, and the more Mbps you need, the more megahertz, i.e. transponders, you need to lease, so that you can sell your services to hundreds of fat bobs sitting at their homes. Sorry Bob, no offense. So this is why satellite operators buy, own, launch and operate ISPs lease capacity on these satellites and use it to provide data to their own customers. ISPs make money from customers, operators make money from ISPs. Now you can start making money even before there is any other infrastructure or industry in space. These are startup activities, but once those activities are established, they will create opportunities for even more ambitious projects in space. One idea is to build colonies for people on Mars and to sell or rent membership in those colonies. The miracle of human industry is that we can turn a profit even when there are no resources at all, simply by applying our own ingenuity and efforts. So what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel with all notifications enabled so that you never miss out on exciting updates.